In this example, I have a series of photographs that make up a panorama, and I'm going to stitch them together using Photoshop's Photo Merge tool. Now, in Adobe Bridge here, just to take a look, here's the images that I color corrected earlier, and there's 17 of them, and I'm going to stitch these together into one panoramic image. So if we jump out of here, go into Photoshop, and we're going to do File, Automate, Photo Merge. We get our Photo Merge dialog box, and there's a couple different layouts here we'll talk about in a second. And we have Use Files or Folder, and then we got Browse. So I'm going to hit Browse. I'm going to go to my corrected folder where I color corrected them and exported them using our batch, and I'm going to select the panoramas. They get loaded into the Photo Merge tool. And then there's some options down here. We have Blend Images Together, Vignette Removal, Geometric Color Correction Detail, and Geometric Distortion Correction. Now, I'm just going to run it like this, and we'll take a look at some different examples with the layouts and these turned on and off. And from there, we'll look for the best result. Now, I went ahead and I processed this panorama a couple times through the Photo Merge tool using um, the automatic, automatic with geo distortion turned on, collage, cylindrical, reposition, and spherical. And looking at these here, you could tell that the file sizes for these bad boys are pretty big. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this stuff. Um, and it does take a while for Photoshop to process um, all the images, so it depends on the resolution of your images and then how many of the images that you have that it's going to sort of merge together. So I was working with 17 of them, which is, you know, kind of intense, but uh, it's pushing on it a little bit, so it gives you an idea of how many you can really use. Um, and processing some of these images took um, a couple minutes for the auto ones. I tried the perspective one, and I couldn't even get it to work. And the one thing that really um, seems to matter is the one thing that seems to matter is the geometric distortion correction because what Photoshop is trying to do is correct um, distortion and perspective um, that's in the image and that takes quite a bit of processing power and time. But anyway, let's jump into um, Bridge and let's compare some of these here. Now, I have my folder and I processed six of them. So I have my auto, which uh, that one looks all right. And then I have auto with the geometric distortion put on. And you can see that there's this curvature now where it tried to sort of um, figure out the perspective and figure out the distortion in the image and try to correct that. Um, now, maybe that's more accurate, but visually it looks a little weird compared to this one. Um, so let's take a look at the collage. Now collage doesn't really do any of that stuff. It sort of takes your images and blends them together based off of the content that's in your image. Now we don't have the full panorama here obviously, but it tried to just stitch together different elements that are in each one of the images and this was the result of that. Now maybe it's useful for some things, but not what we're trying to do here. Um, so we're going to move on to the cylindrical. And the cylindrical looks pretty decent too. Then we have reposition, which Photoshop tries to go through and just blend the images together without any sort of real magic or perspective or any distortion figuring. And then we have spherical. Now spherical is intended to map um, towards the inside of a sphere, so it, it's going to bend it and use that distortion on the inside of a sphere if you're going to um, do any of that stuff. But I'm mainly interested in the cylindrical, and I'm also interested in the auto. So looking at this, I think I'm going to go with the auto. I'm assuming that Photoshop is being more accurate using automatic than it is doing cylindrical, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to stick with this one. And right away inside here, we could see that Photoshop has my 17 images that were stitched together and layers for each one of them with a portion of the image that's being used and a mask. Now zooming in here, you can go ahead and select any of these masks or any of the parts that are on the image. And you can see the parts of the images that are being used 
in the panorama. And how they're blended together. And you can go ahead and turn the visibility off on all these two and kind of see what it was doing to piece it together. But in all, a pretty decent job. And what we're going to do here is just quickly crop this. Draw my crop. And I'm just going to quickly clean this up using our content aware fill. So I'm going to merge my layers. Actually, I'm just going to flatten my image. Use my lasso. Fill, content aware, dump in some bushes there, do the same thing on this side, and this might get a little tricky here, but we'll see what Photoshop can do. Now there's some little bits and pieces of some different stuff here, so this is a pretty good test of um, its fidelity and um, how it tries to figure out and problem solve this particular area. <laughs> so as you can see, it sort of worked and sort of didn't. So in this particular case, I'm going to undo that and I'm going to just go one by one on these pieces here and try it and see if it solves it a different way. That's a little better. Now we'll try this over here. And it's having a little bit of a tough time with that. But for what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And there we have our panorama.